What is going on guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo and welcome to the season of lists. It's now 2016 and the year holds plenty of gaming glory, but not all of that will come from the major marquee AAA titles like Mirror's Edge 2 or the new Legend of Zelda. In fact, a lot of this year's heart and charm will arise from smaller studios, indie games, more bite-sized projects that hide plenty of awesomeness. These are my top five indie games of 2016. Starting things off at number 5, we have the much-anticipated, long-awaited The Witness from the mad mind of Jonathan Blow. This open-world 3D puzzler was initially supposed to release around the launch of the PlayStation 4, but instead has suffered many delays and will now finally surface on January 26th. If you're familiar with the pedigree of Blow, you know that this one promises to be a brain bender. I loved his title, Braid, back on the OG Xbox Live Arcade, this time though packing way more puzzles than that original downloadable gem. Over 650 to be exact, Blow anticipates that the game will take over 80 hours to solve if you attempt 100% completion, although all 650 solutions are not required to see the ending of the game. It looks to be both beautiful and brilliant. The puzzles all take shape with strange lines, almost maze-like doors, unlocking new segments of the island. I have been eagerly awaiting this one since the start of this generation, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it January 26th. Coming in at number four, we have Enter the Gungeon from Devolver Digital and Dodge Roll Studios. This mechanically masterful dungeon crawler roguelike borrows quite a bit from The Binding of Isaac, a game I fell in love with back when it launched on PlayStation 4 a few years back. It seems like that title has spawned a genre of its own, and most of them are pretty darn fun. This one, though, has an excessive amount of polish and charm as you descend into a gungeon, not a dungeon, because the enemies take shape as bullets themselves. You'll face off against shotgun shells, as well as plenty of named bosses, wielding a very wicked set of weapons. There's a little more exploration here than in The Binding of Isaac, and all in all, it is a super fun experience. I've played it at the past few PAXs, and I cannot wait for its final release this year. Number three is Rhyme. No, not the kind of rhyme I make in nearly every video. Instead, Rhyme from Spanish developer Tequila Works, a beautiful, colorful adventure platformer debuting on PlayStation 4. Sadly, this one has been all but invisible as of late, so I'm not sure what is going on with the title or when it will exactly be releasing, but 2016 seems like a safe bet. The game takes place along a gorgeous set of islands and has you exploring a world as a lost boy with no spoken story, but instead letting the environment dictate your tale and adventure. It is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly pretty and looks to fit just the bill in terms of what I like from my indie games. The worrisome thing though is that it hasn't received any publicity as of late, made no appearance at PSX last December, and the developer Tequila Works has only previously made one game, and that was Deadlight, a mediocre survival horror title on Xbox Live Arcade. Nonetheless, the gorgeousness of the initial trailer and gameplay has me super hyped. There are crazy creatures, a very confused boy, and a whole lot of ocean world to explore. It seems like it will be golden once it finally makes its way into our palms. Approaching the top of the list, number two is Firewatch. Campo Santo brings us a title about a park ranger navigating the weird and warm Wyoming wilderness with a handheld radio and a woman on the other end. Part exploration, part narrative, this game seems to hold more mystery than initially meets the eye. While it does have a beautifully warm color palette and wonderful dialogue, I wonder what the true story behind Firewatch really is. There's an initial crime back at home base, as well as some spooky stuff happening once the moon sets in. What will we find in Wyoming? This one has a firm release date of February 9th and includes a lot of charm, humor, and just all in all personality. One of my more anticipated games overall of the year and number two on my indie list, Firewatch can't come soon enough. Rounding out the list at number one, how many of you have guessed my top title for this year? It is indeed the one and only Ukulele. I have been itching for another cute, cool, and colorful 3D platformer for quite some time, and we are finally getting that 
in the form of a resurgence of the old rare team that brought us Banjo-Kazooie back in the day. These two new characters look awesome. I had the privilege of speaking with the developers themselves back at E3 and their vision and passion for gaming is really remarkable and super inspiring. So I know that even though we've only seen early alpha footage, this game will hold plenty of creative worlds, a whole lot of cute, cool and deadly enemies and a big moveset with unique and spunky flair. I'm currently wearing a Banjo-Kazooie shirt in anticipation for this one. I backed the Kickstarter and I hope upon all hopes that it does meet its 2016 release date across a plethora of platforms. I think gaming needs more of this stuff. For every spooky title like Outlast 2, for every deep and explorative game like Firewatch, we need something that reminds us why we play games and that's because they're fun and they bring the kid out in us. Not everything needs to have guns and gore to be great and ukulele perfectly embodies that spirit by bringing together a chameleon and a bat for a beautiful adventure with next-gen graphics and a lot of that old-school charm that made Banjo-Kazooie rare and the entire three-platform genre one of our favorites back in the day. That will do it for my top five indie titles of 2016. There are plenty of others that look exciting as well, but I had to condense it down to a small list to share with you. Let me know which of these five is your favorite and your most anticipated in the comments down below. And if you've got another that you think should have been on this list, please make sure to let me know that as well. In fact, come up with your own top five, share it in the comments, and let's get some cool discussion started. I've got more lists coming your way, including my game of the year from 2015 and my top 10 most anticipated AAA titles in 2016. Until that time though guys and girls, thanks so much for watching. Hope you're having a great start to your year and had fun with this video. Until next time everybody, drink some hot chocolate. Thanks again and we will see you all later.